If we don't have enough mindfulness, if we do not see, you know, the, 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 the reaction of the mind towards the pain, then we lost already. We lost the battle. So the key to all the practice is mindfulness. The key even for, for doing our samatha is mindfulness. The key for doing our investigation is mindfulness. And especially with pain, we have to be extremely mindful. The first reaction of the mind towards the pain I don't like chooses the way, in our, the, the way out. So we will repeat it and we repeat it, you know, and the pain becomes stronger and stronger and stronger until we give up. It's the same thing with boredom. And in the beginning we are a little bored. In the end, after five minutes, we are completely bored. And we have to give it up. Or we find something else. Now I'm thirsty, or now I'm hungry, now I'm sleepy, now I'm this, now I'm that, you know, now it's too cold, now it's so hot. Now it's too wet. Instead of saying, now I'm too lazy. <laughs> too lazy to keep. Get your interest for the object. Get it. It is the most important, as it would be the most important thing in your whole life. It's your life saver. So investigating pain, you know, when we investigate pain, we have to be mindful of the reactions in the mind as well. Don't let the mind, you know, go out in negativity. I don't like this. This will just enforce the mind. Or, you know, having the hope, you know, if I, if I stay long enough, the pain will go. That's expectation. And then because after, after five minutes or three minutes or two minutes the pain doesn't disappear, you know, we are deter, you know, we become deterred or despair. Oh, the, the pain doesn't go away, you know, what does, it, what does the teacher say? He says the pain goes away, you know, why doesn't it go away, you know? Because we were expecting to go away. Like we are expecting to go into samadhi, you know, we never get there. Because constantly our mind is in the future expecting something, you know, that has not really arisen yet. And if, the expecta- if, we, if our expectations don't meet the end, you know, then, then we become despaired and say, oh, what, what, what the hell, you know, this practice doesn't bring anything. And so we give up. We haven't, we haven't seen, you know, we haven't clearly seen what, what is going on in the mind or what is going on in our heart. We really have to see every moment, every moment, every moment. This is mindfulness. Mindfulness of every moment. Catching every moment, every reaction. Now just look at the reaction. You know? Train yourself to look at the reaction before you actually get up. What makes you actually get up from your seat? Or what makes you actually stop, you know, when we do walking meditation? What? It's just a thought. So replace the thought with Buddha, you know, and then it's a thought that makes us stop. It's a thought that makes us go. It's our likings and dislikings who determine our what we what we are going to do. We like to do this, you know, or we like to have a change, you know, a change. We are never satisfied with what is going on. So we have to learn that. We have to train this. It's a simple training. When we investigate uh, pain, we investigate it like we, investig- like we observe our breath. You now where is the pain? Let's focus our attention there. Is the, pa- is the pain point- point-wise? Or is it, is it an area? Or is it moving? You know, is it constant? Or is it constantly arising or ceasing? Or is it becoming stronger and becoming slow? <coughs> Less strong. And then we com- 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 completely get And then we co- completely get one with this object of investigation. 
completely contained. But the wonder, you know, when the pain really disappears, we have to face death. The pain becomes so strong that we think, really, we think we are going to die. The next moment we are dead. And if you say, if you are willing, only if you are willing, okay, I'm ready to die. Then the pain will disappear. But if they are, you know, if we expect it, if we expect that the pain will disappear and then we are not completely wholeheartedly with our determination, of course the pain will not go. We really have to give in ourselves completely, wholeheartedly, and say, okay, let's see what is going to survive. What is going to die and what is going to survive? Let's just see. Just be curious. Curiosity. Interest is the thing that keeps us on our object. Just the curiosity, what is going to happen just right now, at this very moment, with our object, be it the object of Buddha, or be it the breath, or be it the pain. Just observe it, you know, completely not interested in what's going to happen in the next moment, because we, when we investigate, we hope that in the next moment the pain will disappear, and then it will never disappear. Or in the next moment we have... We hope that we're going into samadhi. Well, and samadhi will never come. But if we are just in this very moment, just be aware of this very one moment, then everything will happen. Or everything can happen. But we are so afraid of death. Now just think about, you know, just think about death. And then, then see all the wishes that come up, what you really want to do with the rest of your life. You want to do this, you want to go there, you want to become this, or you want to become that, or you want to not become this, or not to become this. You're so afraid of death. But who is afraid of death? Who is the thing that is afraid of death? It's a Vichay itself who is afraid of that. A Vichay doesn't know itself. So it is terrible afraid of dying. But the Chitta will never die. You know, who knows, you know, that there's death is coming, you know? If there is somebody who knows that death is coming, you know, so... What is going to die? What is going to die? But just, just think about it, you know, and, and see, you know, all your worries that come immediately when you really think about that. This you want to do, and that you want to do, and before I die I want to accomplish this, or accomplish that, or get rid of this, or get rid of that. Or where am I going, you know, after death? Am I going to hell? Most of us go. Or am I going to heaven? Few of us go. Or am I becoming back to a human realm? Or do I become a ghost? Or do I become a human be being? Or an animal? Or what? We don't know. And that's what makes us terrible afraid. We don't know. This is the thing that makes us so terrible afraid. Avicca just translated, of not knowing. And this is the power that keeps us. Keeps us in this realm of rebirth. Avicca itself does not know. And that's why we're so terribly afraid of dying. Because Avicca has the power over us. And its power makes us. But if we face this in the process of going through Dukkha Vedana, although it's through the feeling of pain, we will see that there is something remaining. And that what remains is clear and bright and has enormous energy. And the power who disappeared was the power of darkness, the power of Avicca. 
And then we see for the first time, you know, what makes us. And we do that more often and then raise the fear of death. There is no fear of death anymore. We know this chitta is never dying. Tanacha Mahaboha calls this chitta the, the, the everlasting tourist. Why everlasting tourist? Because it goes from this world to the other world, through the next world to the next world. And there are 36 worlds. So we can, you know, if we, if we stay long enough in one of the worlds, you know, we have forgotten all about the other world, so then we go, like to go back to the next world and the next world and the next world. <clears throat> and there's never an end. Just see, you know, how, how often have you been to this place or to that place? How often have you eaten this or eaten that? There's no, there's, there's a never ending. There's a never ending wanting this, or wanting that, or not wanting this, or not wanting that. But the moment we face, we really face it, and we really determine, just let's die what is ever going to die. And that let's see what is going to remain. And then we'll be, you know, this will be a wonder for us. The chitta becomes so extremely bright. And all the pain has gone. It's amazing. It's like I said, you know, the moment before, the pain, you know, seemed to kill us. And the next moment, the chitta is completely bright and happy and contented. And where has the pain gone? So, as I said, you know, the pain is like a spook. Spooky. It has been built up. It's like a dark shadow that has been diminished by our determination to go through to whatever we want. But of course, if our determination is not wholeheartedly, we'll, we'll never go there. We will never attain there. And it's the same thing, this samadhi, if it's the same thing with any kind of investigation. Just whatever happened, let it happen. Just be mindful of what is happening. Don't react towards it. Don't let the chitta form any thoughts about what is happening. If this is good or if this is bad. You know, good or bad. Heaven and hell. Is it, is the world of duality? Is the world of contrast? And who is it who forms good and bad? It's our heart that forms good and bad. It's our chitta that forms good and bad. The moment we overcome good and bad, you know where is good and bad. The chitta is just one. It's not alone anymore. It's complete. It's the first time it's complete. We always look for completeness. It's trying to find a partner or trying to find a good situation, trying to find a satisfying job or satisfying house or flat or whatever. We always think, all, all our life we think something is missing. Something is missing. And we're looking for the missing part. But how can we find this missing part within this world of duality where there are so many things? We have to get it all or none. So if we, if we cross the border of duality, you know, then the heart will be complete for the same, for the first time. It will be whole. It will be holy. One. Just one. And what, what can it want when, the, when it's just one? What can it be afraid of if it's just one? I know you can't understand this. You know, it, it's difficult to understand. It's difficult to grasp this idea because we do live in this world of duality. And we have to deal with this world of duality. We have to understand this world of duality. We have to understand how it's created and how it sees us. 
And not only one time, we have to understand how it's created, how it sees it. We have to understand it as often until our heart lets go of it. It wants to play this. And we tell it, it just wants to play. Wants to play with this and wants to play with this, you know, and then it's never it's never bored of playing. It doesn't matter if this play, you know, leads to heaven or leads to hell. Avicca is not interested because it doesn't suffer. Avicca just wants to play. He wants to play in this world of duality, and this is something we have to understand. But we don't understand it with our mind. Don't even try. You cannot go beyond. You cannot go. The mind, in its faculty, cannot go beyond its own capabilities. But if we leave it out, if we concentrate it into one point as well, Everything just will disappear, and what remains is that what we call the true chitta. As I said, you know, when we go into deep samadhi, then we will experience the true chitta for the first time. Or when we overcome pain, then we experience the true chitta for the first time, or for the second time, or third time. But we have to do the work. And of course, the moment, you know, the moment uh, the climb to the mountain is difficult, we make a rest. <coughs> well, it's natural, you know. But just we have to learn. You know, no matter what. We still can do one, one, one step. And we still can do one breath. Just one more breath. Just one more breath. And then hours can pass by just doing one more breath. Or hours can buy just doing one more step until there is nobody walking anymore. And that is an amazing thing. You know, walking up and down, walking up and down, battling with the force that doesn't want to walk, battling with Avicca or battling with the Kilesas. And then they say, okay, you know, you don't want to walk, you, you, you don't want to walk, but I go on. And you just go on walking. Don't take this so, don't take this for so important. That doesn't want to walk. Just let it don't walk. Okay, you don't want to walk. I go on. You don't want to sit. I go and sit. You don't like the pain. I like the pain. <laughs> just go on. It's something, you know, duality not only exists in, in this world outside of us, it exists within us as well. And that's how we can deal with it. <clears throat> you know, just look at the mind, how it works. Yeah? Today we assume this, and yesterday we assumed that, and it's completely contrary. Just look at your life ten years ago, what you thought, you know. Or twenty years ago. What you did and what you thought. And how is it today? It doesn't mind, you know. It, 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 it's, not, uh, it, it's not convinced by contrary things. Today it believes this and tomorrow it believes the opposite. And it doesn't care if it believed yesterday the, the other thing. It just doesn't care. It's just not interesting. That's the way of the mind. That's the way of the chitta. Eh? That's the way of the kilesa. It's like a monkey, you know, who, who eats a banana and sees a new banana and, he, you know, he forgets all about the old banana and scraps the new banana. That's, that's the way of our mind. That's the way of our heart. The monkey mind. So if we don't rein it in, if we don't train it, and mindfulness is the important thing. Mindfulness is the absolute key. Just be mindful of whatever is going on. You know, and if you feel mindfulness slaps, you know, bring it back. So, just tell yourself loudly, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, or shake your head, you know, and be mindful again. Don't blur away. Just don't blur away. Because that leads to, you know, this is not useful. 
Every moment we are mindful is a useful moment. If we sit on, you know, and then and we decide, you know, just to blur away, then this sitting is useless. But if you fight every moment, we fight with, with the kilesas, fight with not wanting or fight with the pain, then this is useful. Because we know actually we are mindful of what is going on. But if we set our mind on half caste, you know, it, this is not very useful. So get the mind always back. Turn it back to mindfulness. I'm mindful. Just say, say, tell yourself, I'm mindful. Now I'm mindful. What is going on? Ask yourself, what is going on? Huh? What's going on? What the hell is going on? And then this moment you're mindful. And then direct it towards your investigation. Or direct it towards your, your object of calm. Go back. We are ruled by the power of darkness, or we are ruled by the power of avicca. Don't forget it. It has, has had a power so long over us. Not only one life or two lives or three lives or ten lives. Millions or billions of lives. It had the power. Don't underestimate the power of the Avicca. If it wouldn't have had such an enormous power, we wouldn't have been so long in the circle of birth and death. So it, it, it's not going easily to give up. It's power. You know, just because we don't want it anymore, you know, tell Avicca to go away, and it won't go away. <laughs> tell her, you know, just tell it, you know, okay, I'm sick of it, you know, I'm sick of it, you know, just go away, just leave me alone, just give me a break. You have to force it. You have to force, like, like every tyrant, you have to really force him to give up his power, don't you? A tyrant is not going to be willing to give it up unless you not put the knife on his throat. So we have to put the knife on the throat of a Kilesat or a Vicha. And that is in the in the, in the investigation of pain. Okay, let's die. That is really putting the knife at the throat of a Vicha and it will disappear. Sorry that it won't disappear forever, but it comes back. But for the moment it will disappear. And so we know that there is something else. You know, it's like a curtain, you know. We look behind a curtain and there is some shadow dancing going on. And then we open the curtain and then we see. Everything is clear. And then after, you know, the curtain comes back again. So then we have to investigate the khandhas, the true nature of the khandhas, and then the true nature of avicca. To really understand to make it go off forever. Samadhi makes it go off for a while, for a certain amount of time as well. So we see the difference. And that's what, what gives us a basis, you know. We know that there is something else. Well, we already know it. Otherwise, we wouldn't do this. We already have some, some sort of little faith that there is something else than, than whatever we see and whatever we think we are. But then we experience it for the first time. And an experience is something, you know, we won't forget. And it's like the experience, you know, of somebody who touches the fire, who really puts his hand in the fire. He won't forget it for the rest of his life. Huh? <laughs> I don't think anybody will forget it. It doesn't forget the burning power of the fire. And that's the same thing. If somebody really reaches the deep state of samadhi, he won't forget it. Not for the rest of his life. He knows that there is something, you know. That there is something beyond all the things that we believe in. Beyond all the things that we constantly battle. You know, and we constantly battle. And what do we battle? We, you know, we battle the true nature. You know, because we don't like this or we don't like that or we want this or we want that. We just cannot accept the going on of things. 
You see, you can accept, you know, whatever happens right now, you know, we are fine with it. And then we, ho- we don't have any battle going. But, you know, you see, it, it, it's going on constantly. Now we like this, now we like that. Now we don't like this, now we don't like that. Constantly knacking, like a little child knacking at the skirt of a mother until it buys this thing or does this or does that. And if, it, if the mother doesn't buy it, you know, it cries out its heart. But if the mother is determined, you know, it just doesn't give in. Like we don't give in. in. And then it will stop. It has to stop. We've seen it. We've seen it within our lives. You know, if you don't give in, you know, it stops. It has to stop. This is the power of determination. We just don't give in. The fear of death or the fear of unknown is the thing that moves us. And fear is nothing else, or pain is nothing else, than one of the powers of avicca. You know, like the tyrant has the power over the soldiers, or over the people. Well, he's using the people, you know, to, to punish us. Or the people, you know, to hurt us. You know, he, he says, he tells the soldiers, you know, to keep us in prison, you know. And then the soldiers will follow him. And keep us in prison. And that's the same thing with Avicca and Kilesas. Avicca tells the Kilesas, you know, to bring us some pain. And then they will bring us some pain. Because it has the power over it. Unless we don't take the power of Avicca, eh? so that's why you know why in our tradition or in the first tradition, the path to enlightenment is always described as a war. It's a war against the Avicca. It's a war against the powers of the of the Kilesas. It's a battle. It's a constant battle. And you see yourself, you know, well, however you describe it, it's a battle. You go in the box ring ring and the champ, you know, is gi- giving you a hit. And once you, you, and you get knocked out and once you get, get your conscience back, you get back into the ring. And you get so often uh, until you understand the way how the champ boxes. And this is what we have to understand. We have to understand the ways of a witcher. How it fools us. How it tricks us. This is what we have to understand. We have to understand the Avicca. You know, we have to understand the master of deception. The master of the magic. You know, when we go into a circus and we see a magician, you know, we, we look and we are, we are fascinated by the tricks he produces. But if we, if we go beyond the stage and look how he does the tricks, we are not fascinated anymore. So we diminish the power of this magician by going beyond the stage and looking how he does these tricks. And it's the same way we're going and look, you know, how our Vicha pulls up his tricks. Once we understand how it pulls up, you know, we are not anymore. We cannot anymore de- be deterred or we cannot anymore be pulled by these things. And that's how illusion stops. Because we're not pulled by this. It doesn't actually matter. The things are going on, you know. It's, it's like you know, observing, observing the world, you know. From a high point of view, you know, you don't have any influence. You know, the world is just going on, you know. You can't change anything anyway. The only thing that you can change is yourself. Whatever goes on, you know, just let it go on. Just observe it. Be clearly to observe. If there's pain, you know, observe the pain. If there's some happy feeling, you observe the happy feeling. Observe its arising and ceasing nature. And observe, especially, you know, that it's anatta. This is not me, that is not mine, this does not belong to me. 
How can, you know, well, what is the observant, what is the observed object, you know, think about it. When you look around, you know, just open your eyes and, and see a tree, you know, you don't even think that you are the tree. Huh? You think you are the tree? Just because you see it? Or you can observe it? I don't think that you think you are the tree. So how can you think that you are this body? You can see it, you can observe it. So who is the observer? Or you can observe the pain, you know. Who is the pain, you know? And what, what, what knows about the pain? The two different things. Understand this clearly. Get it clear. They're two different things. The one who knows about the pain cannot be the pain. The pain doesn't know itself, doesn't know anything about the pain. But the one who knows about the pain and the pain must be two different things. Like you open your eyes and see a tree. You don't think that you're the tree. <clears throat> at the moment you, you look at your body, you think immediately, oh yes, that's me. <laughs> Just because you're so close, <laughs> you think it's me. <laughs> and your thoughts are so close, you know, you think it's me. If somebody else thinks something, you know, that's his thoughts, you know. But if you ever close to him, you know, well, then we might even think that these are all sorts of things. We just grab them, you know, and, and say, you know, it's me. Get to know the things clearly. Get to understand it. So do your practice. Do the practice of walking meditation and sitting meditation. What is helpful, you know, is also listening to Dhamma talks once in a while. But when you listen to a Dhamma talk, listen with your heart. Don't listen with the mind. Don't try to understand. Just listen, the, just listen the Dhamma arise within your own heart. Listen there within your own heart. And the heart is at the center of the chest. It's not the physical heart, but it's called the chitta. Listen with this. Don't, don't let the mind listen or don't let the ears listen. When you listen to a Dhamma talk, you can become extremely calm. And if it's really Dhamma that comes from the heart, then it will arise within your own heart. You don't even have to think about it. You just sip it in. And the moment you need it, it will come out. Don't worry about it if you understand it or don't understand it. If you listen to it once, you know you will understand this. If you listen to it a second time, you will understand another thing. If you listen to it a third time, you're, you will understand a third thing. So it's not a waste of time, you know. You don't listen to Dhamma just once. What I say within the last five years, you know, I over and over and over repeat it one and the same thing. Always say the same thing. So when you listen, just listen with the heart. This is the way to get to the language of the heart. There is one universal language that all beings of the universe understand. And that is the language of the heart, or the language of the chitta. If you go into our chitta, you know, and, and, and start listening with our heart, or listening with our chitta, instead of listening with our mind that tries to understand, that tries to grasp the understanding, then we can learn, or then we can start learning the language of the heart. And if we listen to this, and then we will be able, after a while or after a long time, to understand other beings from other realms, because they use the language of the heart. Our language is just, you know, up in our minds. We use words, you know, that, <coughs> that is just approximate. The language of the heart, you know, arises in the heart. The Dhamma arises in the heart. It doesn't arise in my mouth. So there's no need to look at my mouth. It arises in my heart, you know, and if you open your heart, then it will arise in your heart as well. The same Dhamma. And the understanding, the chitta, 
will understand it at the same time or will not understand it because it's not yet trained enough to understand it. But if it goes on training itself and listens to it again, then it will understand. One time there will be understanding. One time there will be understanding of this, another time there will be an understanding of that. So it's not a waste of time to listen to the talk of Dhamma over and over and over again. It cannot become boring. I tried it out and I listened to the same talk. One after, I just finished and then I listened over and over again. Three or four times. And I got, didn't get bored. Just listening with the heart. Not listening with your ears or not listening with your mind, not trying to understand and form your objections or form your, form your opinions about it. Just listen, listen. I've given some, some CD players to some, or MP3 players to some of you, so, and some CDs, so you can, you have the opportunity. And it leads to samadhi, sometimes pretty fast, especially if the mind is completely restless. This can help, you know, to lead pretty quickly to samadhi. So, and with this, I end my talk. <laughs>